The interval between the warning bell and the end of lunch bells passes in the blink of an eye. We really should go. People will freak out and start a search party if we skip. Hanako sighs. You're right. Slowly she rises to her feet and I follow suit. Silently we make our way up the old stairs to the third floor and then to our classroom. At the door I take point and open the door ahead of Hanako, bowing my head down in apology in advance. I'm sorry we're late, teacher. I'm greeted not by stern words, nor by an angry instruction to take my seat, but simply by the silence created by fifteen or so students trying not to laugh. Mutao, ever tardy, has yet to arrive. However, the fact that Hanako and I have arrived together is blatant blatantly obvious. Make that about fourteen students trying and one student absolutely failing. The lovers return! <laughs> yeah, thanks, you can calm down now. I step through the door and realise that ha Hanako is firmly pressed against my back, hiding herself from the class. With my steps coming closer to my desk, she eventually breaks from me and stiffly walks to her own. Her efforts to bl mentally block everyone's presence from her mind are written cl fairly clearly on her face. Quickly checking the door for any signs of the teacher's arrival, I made a, make a trip to Hanukkah's desk and wh whisper in her ear, Don't worry about Misha, she's always like this. I enjoyed myself today. Don't sweat it, okay? Hanukkah nods her head behind her folded arms, but she still doesn't show her face. I yearn to stay and console her more, but Mutao picks this exact moment to enter the class halfway through his lecture, as if he started it in the hallway. Which, of course, is directly proportional to the charge, but inversely proportional to the square of the distance. He's so engrossed in his speech that he doesn't even notice me sneaking back into my seat from Hanukkah's desk. While Mutao's spiel rambles on, Misha leans over to me. The teacher may not have noticed your tardiness, but I did. That much is obvious from the show you just put on. I've been instructed to let you off the hook for today, but only on one condition. Would that be joining the student council, mayhap? Oh, and what would that be? You have to help us this afternoon. I crane my neck to look over Misha's shoulder. Shizuna is conveniently not making eye contact with me. Fine. Just for today. I've already told you I'm not joining the council, remember? Of course. Doing so would be considered, um, considered... She looks down at a notebook, obviously looking for a place in the script. Under duress, and hence would be against regulations. How very strange of you to be considerate of the regulations now. Things should be done by the book! It's just that the book has been written for every situation, so there are times when it can just be ignored. And yet, you two wonder why no one else wants to be in the student council. Ah, oh, that was mean. That was kind of mean. After poking her tongue out at me, Misha returns to her workbook, and we battle our way through the latter half of the school day. Ah. Before I can even stand up, Misha and Shizuni have placed their hands on both my shoulders. Hey, I said I'd help out, okay? This is just insurance, Sao. Insurance! Hisao? Hanako timidly tries to leave the room by circling around us, and I suddenly realise this may be my one chance to escape. Oh, hey, Hanako, what's up? Ooh. Hey, what makes you think you've got time to chat? Oh, relax, this won't take long. Sorry, Hanao? Han. Ugh. Hanao? I'm just merging people's names now. <clears throat> oh, relax, this won't take long. Sorry, Hanako, you were saying? Uh, I was going to be in the library, and, and I thought. Hanako's thumbs dance around each other, and her eyes flit around the room, looking everywhere but at us. Sorry, Hanako, but his house to come with us. He's got work to do. Shizuni. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, but you can up too if you'd like. Um. So how about it, Hisao? I've done enough work for the council already. Hmm. We did say that we'd help. Hmm. I have done enough work. Uh, right. Hmm. Because Hanako just wants to go to the library and read. That's not a bad thing. Um. And I don't think Misha and Shizuni get on with her. Or. I don't know. Hmm. Uh. What am I gonna do? We could just ask Hanako. But that might mean she just goes along with it. Um, that she comes, would that be a bad thing for Hanako? Especially with Shizuni before, he's like, ah, oh, the enemy of my friend, the, the friend of my enemy is my enemy. 
Hmm. Hmm. I'll ask Hanako. What do you say, Hanako? If, if we all help, it shouldn't take too long at all. Hanako's fidgeting answers my question before she even forms the words. I I really need to go. Well, that was to be expected. It looks like it's just me and the council girls again. Ooh, uh, mm, I should have just said no, shouldn't I? Oh, well. <laughs> it's easier to resign myself to another afternoon's work in the small council office. I'll catch up with you later, okay? Oh, okay. Right, now that the ferals are over, it's work time. Misha and Suzuni frog march me to the student council office, never once letting go of my shoulders. I feel a little bad for ditching Hanako like this, but if this is the price of getting Misha off of her back, so be it. So then, what are we up to today? Debrief! Uh, isn't that supposed to happen after something? Yep, we have to collect all of the information for the vessel so that Shikan can debrief the teachers. Shizuni drops a large pile of paperwork on the desk in front of me and smiles succinctly. You need to sort these out into two piles. One for financial stuff like receipts, one for feedback, one for positive feedback, maybe one for things that look like they could be problems next year, one for problems that probably won't be able to get fixed. That's a few more than two... <laughs> That's a few more than two piles. Huh? Alright, oh, yeah, I thought it would be only two piles. My bad. <laughs> the student council needs two piles! <laughs> the student inquisition needs two piles. What was it? Financial and feedback. And positive feedback. Three piles! Financial feedback, positive feedback, and problems. Four piles! You know, etc. Right, while I'm doing this, what will you two be doing? Well, we missed lunch because we were collecting all of these reports, so we're going to go and get some food. Why didn't you just sort them out while you were collecting them? Thankfully, my self-defense mechanism kicks in and prevents me from opening my mouth and further worsening my situation. Eh? How is that fair? Da -da -da -da. I was spreading over the unfair distribution of work so much that I didn't notice that Shizuni had kept on signing. If it weren't for Misha's outburst, I probably wouldn't have noticed at all. Shizuni seems to be delivering a fairly long string of commands to Misha, and none of them look pleasant. Ah. Reaching a conclusion, Misha signs briefly back to Shizuni and then sits down at the desk next to me. Shizuni waves to the both of us. Oh, that's so mean! Before disappearing out of the door. What was all that about? Shijan was worried that you'd get it all wrong unless you were supervised. And since she can't tell you how you're messing things up, she thinks Oh, oh bummer. I wanted to go with Shichan. Poor Misha. But she's going to bring us back some food. How good is that? Misha's flippancy is out of this world, from down in the dumps to on top of the world over some calories. It's hard to imagine how anyone could operate at that level. Well, it could have been worse. So what are we supposed to be doing? Collation. I'd gathered that, right, mouse button. Well, let's just start making piles. We'll work out what the piles mean later. Right. We start to separate all of the piles into increasingly complex piles. At first, it's just simple categories. Financial, feedback, incident reports, risk <laughs> risk assessments, da da da. Then they split apart into the good and bad reports and further still until it starts to look like we're just throwing the papers onto the desk. This is hopeless. Huh? Why? We're doing what we were told, right? Yes, but it looks like we're just making a mess. No, I think we got a lot done. Shichan will be able to work out the rest from here. So I think we can stop about here then. It's almost as if Misha's common sense left the room with Shizuni is Misha's common sense. <laughs> Still, there's no point in arguing. Anyway. What's the deal with you and Hanako? Deal? You were hanging out with her today, weren't you? Have there been any fireworks? Any gossip that you're withholding from me? If I told you about my own circumstances, it wouldn't be gossip, would it? Uh, I, I, I guess not. We're just friends, I guess. Why are you so interested? I thought you and Shizuni didn't like her. It's not really like that. You know, Shichan and Lily don't get along well. And since you can't really get Hanako away from Lily, we don't talk to her much. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that I, I can't be concerned for her. What is there to be concerned about? Well, she never hangs out with anyone, right? It's no good, Shichan. If Shizuni and Lily dislike each other because their personalities are different, then I hate to think how Misha and Hanako would get along. I mean, in one way or the other, we're all in the same boat here, right? Well, I guess. This one time, when she left the class halfway through, Shi Chan went to the teacher and asked what was going to be done about it. He said that every student here has special needs, and that Shi Chan shouldn't worry herself about it. Hanako never does any group work, she just runs off. Isn't that enough to be concerned about? Hmm, I guess you're right. She still hardly says a word when we're talking. 
Well, that's more that, than I've been able to do. Shichan and I both tried when she started, but she got scared and ran off. Hmm. I consider telling Misha that exactly the same thing happened with me, but she seems caught up in thought. Listening to Misha without Shizune's influence is... interesting. I think she needs to realize that people here don't care what she looks like and that she can trust us. If she could, I'd feel a lot better about her. I think this is longer I've watched Misha without seeing her sign. When she's with Shizune, she's, con Sh Shizune. she's constantly mo waving her hands around, explaining the wor world to Shizune. That amount of effort pro probably places a strain even on, on an agile mind. And let's face it, Misha isn't the world's brightest spark. Well, I'll keep an eye on her for you. But you should probably apologize for earlier. I don't think Hanako is cut out for that kind of joke. Oh. Oh! Oh. I didn't even notice. Sorry. Don't say it to me. Just mention it to her. Alright. First thing tomorrow, I'll speak to her. That sounds worrying. Okay, good. Ah! A cacophony from the door heralds the return of Shizuni. I guess she can't really tell how much noise she's making. Oh, Shijan! You're, ba you're back! Shizuni appears, completely laden with goods from the corner shop. She's not going to be happy with the piles, is she? There was some surplus left from the festival. Since this is officially festival business, I've splurged a little. Nice idea, Shi Chan. Ten points. Is that really allowed? Whoa! Okay, it's allowed. Ignore me. For someone who refuses to join us, you seem to take an unhealthy interest in the politics of this council. I shall punish your insolence by wrestling your portion of the feast. Fine, fine. I get it. Misha slides the multiple stacks of paper to one side to make room for the avalanche of food Shizune is spreading out. As I watch my hard yet misdirected work become wasted, I realise that it's little wonder why these two need help. The, the corner shop meal isn't overly tasty, but at the very least it's filling. Signing. Thanks for, the, thanks for helping today. Most of the time we just make up the reports for the staff. This year we can at least make up some relevant headings on the debrief. <laughs> Are you sure this isn't a corrupt organisation? Not at all, not at all. We're by the book. It's not our fault if the book isn't specific enough. I thought that was the definition of corruption. You think too much? <laughs> you know what? You're probably right. Anyway, I must be off. That is, if I'm allowed to leave. <laughs> no! You're stuck here. You're stuck here forever! <laughs> Your work has been deemed sufficient. You may leave. Well, thank you. You know, if you stress the free meal side of, of the things over the endless workload side, you'd probably end up with more recruits. You might just have a point. Think about it. And think about what we talked about. You don't have to tell that to Shizuni if you don't want. What? Oh, alright. I'll try to see her tomorrow. Good night, Hichan. Night, Misha. Shizuni. Hmm. I feel bad for leaving Hanako alone. I mean, I mean, I, she probably appreciates a bit of solitude every now and again, but you, see, you need people. You still need people. You can't just... Try and live your life on your own and be lonely all the time. And yeah, chirping birds. Normally, this would be a good time to reflect upon the beauty of nature. But it's six in the morning. Covering my head with the pillow, I slam my face into the mattress, hoping that the impact will send me instantly back to sleep. Doesn't work, mate. <laughs> Futile. I toss and turn, but sleep simply won't return to me. All right, nature, you've won. See, I'm getting up now. The lack of sleep weighs me, my mind down, and there's only one remedy for this. A nice, hearty breakfast. It'd be nice to be the first person here. He's not. To be the first to dig into a piping hot pile of food, to sit wherever I desire, but it's probably packed, isn't it? It would have been nice, yes. But even my exceptionally early start has put me behind the most diligent of students. I guess there's quite a few people here that have early starts, for one reason or another. A group of students in sports clothing huddle around one table, eagerly discussing game plans in between inhaling great gulps of food. Scattered around the hall are a number of bleary-eyed students, probably suffering from the same ailment as myself. Noisy birds. And of the course, of course, there are the strange people that actually enjoy getting up this early. The ones with their bags stuffed with textbooks and completed home homework. It's hard not to despise people like that, even more so when you're tired yourself. Picking out a familiar face from the thin crowd, I head towards the nearest table. Lily sits alone, delicately feeling her her way around a small plate of eggs with her fork. It's almost a shame to interrupt her and her clockwork movements. I wonder, is this how a blind person zones out? Simply moving in predetermined patterns learned over the years, just like how a sighted person would eat while reading a newspaper. Oh, good morning, Lily. I didn't expect you to be here this early. Oh, Hisao, you startled me. I didn't know you took breakfast this early. 
I don't. This is an exception to the rule. I'd greatly prefer to be late to school than early to breakfast. Lily gives a small sigh at my admitted tardiness as I begin eating my food. It doesn't take long for her to lapse back into her previous mindless nibbling. Each short motion lacks energy. I suppose this is similar to letting your eyes wander while performing any ordinary chore. But after a few repetitions of the fine food, eat food cycle, Lily puts down her fork and dabs her lips with a napkin. Hisao, do you mind if I ask you a question? All I want is a little food and about four hours of sleep, and nobody says, can I ask you a question for a simple question? Sure. Do you think of Hanako as a friend? This seems like a leading question. Uh, I, I guess so. Why do you ask? No real reason. LIES! LIES! I do have another question, though. Why is it that you think of her as a friend? Whoa, this is, this is well above my level. What is she expecting from me? I'm not really sure. I guess it's, I guess it's because she's a little different in the way she deals with people. Hmm. Since I've known her, she hasn't really connected with anyone. She doesn't seem interested in other people. I think people are a little scared, are, are, are a little scared of her by her appearance. Really? I thought that kind of thing was, well, discouraged here. Discriminating and such. It's not going to be conscious stuff, is it? Hmm. If I were to put it one way... She furrows her back brow in thought, a move which makes me slightly anxious to what she's plucking from her mind. I'd say that you're a little naive. Naive. I'd be insulted if not for the slightly cynical grin on her face. I, uh, I see. While Yamuku has a stronger sense of community compared to other schools, it's far from being free of conflict. Rules cannot remove human nature, after all. Only suppress it. That's something I've noticed or already, actually. Just little things, like how certain people in their cliques avoid each other in the hallways. <laughs> it's no different than my old school, really. Even Lily and Shizuni could be considered bitter rivals, even though they both seem like fairly accepting people. Well, at least... The Misha-tinted Shizuni does. Who knows what actually goes on with her fingers and behind her glasses. Hmm, I guess you're right. But when I first came here, everything was a bit of a shock. I kept on making mistakes, or at least thinking I was making mistakes. Like, when we first met and I said, I see, to you. I didn't know if that was considered rude or anything, so I tried to just put it in the back of my mind. Treating people any differently and that kind of thing. So I didn't. I told myself that Hanako and you and everyone else was just normal. And I tried to ignore the obvious. I talked to Hanako as if she were any other person, so we became friends. At least, that's how I think it happened. But you know, I feel guilty just for, for just from saying something like that aloud. As if it took extra effort to think of Hanako, or you, or anyone here as normal. I don't think that's right. <sighs> Hisao, I think you are naive, but I also think you are a good person. It is perhaps one of your better traits. <laughs> that's a weird things to say. Uh, I suppose I can take that as a compliment. Tell me, are you free tonight? Well, if you don't count homework, then I'm as free as the breeze. In that case, would you care to join myself and Hanako for tea? Uh, I don't really have that much money at the moment, so going out isn't really... Oh, I didn't mean going out. Just here, this evening. You can access the classrooms in the evening here? No, uh, that's not what I meant. Hanako and I often use my room for tea parties together. Please feel free to drop by after dusk. Sure, I see no problem with that. What's your room number? 225, room 25 on the second floor. <laughs> Sorry, I said like a lift there, like... 225, <laughs> second floor, for tea parties with Lily and Hanako. Um, <laughs> it's just the voice I've given her. Okay, sure. Well then, I'd best be off. I have class representative duties to attend to, after all. Until this evening, Hassal. Yeah, catch you later. Hang on. Was I just invited to a girl's room after hours? Is that even allowed? Mm. There is the curfew here, but I've never heard any rooms about visitors in the dorm rooms. Even still, this is enough to get my sleep-deprived brain jump-started. Add that to a loop on breakfast and you have an incredible pick-me-up.